Hello everyone, it's Menenberg coming to you again with a new episode of The Worst. Now, before I introduce my topic for today, I have to just say, my birthday is October 11th. Now, why you might ask that I am saying that? It's because my topic for today is kind of shooting myself in the foot because it's a little bit ironic that I would talk about greeting cards being the worst on the day about a week or two before my birthday. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but let's do it anyway. Now, before we continue, let me just say this. As usual, I gotta preface this by saying that I'm not actually saying that greeting cards are the worst thing. There's a lot worse things in the world. Many, 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 many worse things in the world, okay? So let's move on from that. In any case, it's exaggeration. So here we are talking about greeting cards. Greeting cards, for those of you who don't know, is this really weird industry in our country, and maybe elsewhere. I have, I've been around, I don't look for greeting cards in you know, when I'm touring Europe. I just don't. Let's just talk about the United States though. It's an industry. Every grocery store has a dedicated aisle to greeting cards. Drug stores have it. You have entire stores. The Hallmark industry was built around greeting cards. And there was a time where greeting cards were not a whole lot more than a, you know, kind of a pithy little remark, a nice little sentiment. And it wasn't that bad. It was written on some nice, you know, card stock. This is a note card, similar type of material and you got it for you know birthdays, holidays, and that type of thing. Now, it has expanded into this, I think they've taken what was formerly the scrapbooking trend and made it into the greeting, scrapbooks for greeting cards and they've gotten all crafty and glued all these like miniature, like little champagne glasses and balloons and all these, I, I saw a greeting card with plastic sushi in the card. What are we doing, people? Come on, that's the worst. I'm not saying you can't be crafty and enjoy crafts, all the power to you. What I'm saying is, when I get a birthday message from a loved one, I don't need you to spend nine, 10, 11 dollars on a piece of cardstock and some plastic sushi. I just don't need that. What I do like is the sentiment that you wrote, the feelings that you have that you put down on paper, cardstock, whatever you put it down on, and you gave that to me. That is what I read, that is what I actually care about, that is what I'm going to hold on to. I actually have a box, I have two boxes actually at home, where I save my cards. From students, I have uh, what I call my yearbook, I just get a composition notebook and I take all the cards I get over the year and I tape them in there. I save that stuff. But I don't care what you wrote it on. I don't want you wasting your money. It doesn't make any sense. Now, before I continue about another reason why it's, it's the worst, I gotta give a shout out to Mrs. Menenberg. Mrs. Menenberg is the person in our family who is really, really good about cards. She does thank yous better than I do. She does things like, you know, really thoughtful uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all the holidays, all the birthdays. She handles that for our family for the most part, okay? And recently, probably like six, eight months ago maybe, uh, our local expensive card company that had a business, a brick and mortar store, went under. And so they had this like fire sale where they can get all these really expensive cards, eight, nine, ten dollars, and she got them on the dollar. So she cleared them out, got like a lifetime supply of cards. Well done, Mrs. Menenberg. Love that. And uh, it's great. Um, but under normal circumstances, would I ever encourage somebody to buy that? No. No. Okay, so let's get back to why they are the worst. First, let's talk about the money piece. I kind of mentioned this already. It's overpriced. It's a piece of cardstock. You might have some little crafty details in there, but really, let's face it. When we get a greeting card, there's this weird part in our mind that is probably deep, but some of us, it's a little closer to the surface. Not me, because I actually save them. But some of us are thinking like, okay, you're reading this card in front of the person. How long do I have to keep this card before I throw it away, right? You end up tossing them many, many, many times. More times than not, most of us are actually gonna be just tossing that card relatively quickly after reading it the first time. The only time. Okay, so this idea of spending six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I've seen fifteen dollar cards out there. Spending that kind of coin for a card that's gonna be read once, maybe twice, and then tossed, why? Why not instead just take a line piece of notebook paper, write your sentiments, and write something really meaningful with a little bit more space, because they don't give you a lot of space, I'll get to that in a second, and do that, and spend more on the gift. If you're gonna buy them a gift, that's more meaningful. Not the gift, but the writing, the sentiment. That is more meaningful, my friends. 
Okay, another part about the money. Let's let's just put this in terms that you all, all can understand. The money piece, it's not that I'm trying to be cheap. I'm just trying to say that like the value there, it, it doesn't it doesn't show up for me. I understand like it, some of you like you really like a nice card and you want to hold on to that and keep it fine. I'll get you the nice card. But for me, my birthday, October 11th coming up, do not spend $9 on a card for me. Get a piece of card stock, get a line notebook piece of paper, get a napkin for all I care. I don't really it doesn't bother me what it was written on. It matters what was written. Okay, that's what I'm about. Okay, just make that for the record. Um, but quantifying this dollar amount, let's just take a basic number. Let's take a seven dollar card because that's actually pretty average right now. I was recently getting a card for my wife for her birthday, which was a couple weeks ago. Eight, seven, eight bucks is kind of average. So if you were to instead take that seven, eight bucks, let's say you don't put it toward a gift for the person you're getting the card for. Let's say instead you put it toward a meal. You could get a very nice burrito for about seven or eight bucks at any of the local chains, Cordoba, Chipotle, uh, you know, there's plenty of other burrito places you can get a really good burrito for seven, eight bucks. So I ask you, who of you would not rather have a tasty burrito from Taco Del Mar than a card that you're going to read once or twice. You're only going to eat that burrito once, but it's probably going to taste a lot better than that awkward moment where you have to read a card in front of somebody. Let's talk about that now. Another thing I don't like about greeting cards is this weird exchange that happens when somebody hands you a card. Sometimes they mail you and that's different. But, but if you are handed a card and you are forced to read that card in front of that person, that is one of the few instances where Menenberg gets awkward. And that, you who have had me as a teacher, you who know me, I don't get awkward very easily. That's one of the ways I get awkward. And the reason I get awkward is because hopefully the person writing the card put some thought and time into what they wrote, right? And so as such, they want to see how I react when I read that card. They want to elicit those emotional reactions that the sentiment actually has. So it's a lot of pressure, right? Because let's face it, hold on, copy. We might be having a bad day. We might be having something else going on. We might be distracted. We might be having a great day and it's kind of a weird, serious moment on the card. Our reaction though is what the person giving us the card is after and that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody. So I feel awkward. In fact, I feel so awkward sometimes that I can't even actually read the card. I have to skim through and I'll read certain words and I'll read it later when they're not around, but I'll fake it just so that I can sort of give them what they're after. Uh, and, and it's just a weird exchange. I don't like it. It's the worst. Okay. One of the last things I'm going to say about cards that is the worst is the fact that this greeting card industry has decided to, and we've given them this power, mind you, in capitalism, supply and demand and all that, has basically decided that you as an individual have no ability to write. I'm an English teacher. That's not far from the truth sometimes. Uh, but you also don't have uh, the wherewithal or the time or the desire to put down your own sentiments on these cards. Because if you go and look at these cards that are available in your grocery store aisle or wherever you get your cards, many, many, many of them, probably like two thirds, maybe even three quarters of them, have all the writing on the front and in the inside and there's very little if any space for you to actually put anything down aside from love Menenberg. Okay? Very little space. So you're paying not only for the goofy craft, but you're paying for somebody else's ideas to express how you feel. Does that make any sense to you? No. I mean, it's kind of like when you were in high school and you had your first crush or whatever, and you were like, here, I'm gonna play this song and this is how I feel about you. And sometimes that worked, right? Sometimes that, oh, this is our song, right? That's how we get this idea of this is our song. But, what most people want, I'm, I'm projecting, I'm assuming most people, most people want honest sentiment from the person that they care about. They don't want somebody else's ideas. And that's why like when I'm reading the card, and like I said, I save these cards, I, I hold on to them. I don't care what the greeting card company wrote. I read that, I might have a quick laugh if it's a funny card, but I immediately forget it. I never read that part again. 
I mean, it's out of my mind, out of my memory within four seconds of reading. I'm serious. The actual piece that you wrote who gave me the card is what I care about. That is what I will reread perhaps. That's what I'll hold on to. That's what I'll treasure. That's what I care about. So why are you paying this money for somebody else's thoughts if, if most people are like me and don't actually care about the funny card? Sometimes there's a silly picture. It, it makes you laugh. Great. But do you really need to spend eight bucks on that? Nine, ten, no, you don't. In fact, the funniest, best cards in my experience are usually like two or three dollars. They're the cheaper ones. In any case, this rant went a little longer than I thought it would. I hope you all send me a really, really nice card for my birthday on October 11th. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in any case, I want to hear from you. Uh, well, how do you feel about greeting cards? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you think they could be better like me and more simple and cheaper like me? Or do you really appreciate the really crafty little mini plastic sushi that come on a $12 card? People, greeting cards are the worst. I hope you agree with me. And if you don't, I don't really care. Remember, life is about choices, my friends. We'll see you next time for the worst.